Well, welcome back to RDWorks Learning Lab uh, for part two of this session on setting up your mirrors. Now in part one we successfully achieved a perfect line of sight between the cutting head and the laser tube. Now if you remember at the end of part one we had just turned on the laser beam and done a test firing and found that the beam hadn't gone all the way through to mirror number three at the head. Is that a failure? Well, we shall have to carry on and see now. And with my spy hole that I've got here now, you can see down to the other unit. So I've just put a piece of paper in there just so that we can see roughly where we are. Well, you saw it there, down at around about seven o'clock because if I put a piece of tape across this way and I do a pulse test there we go. you'll see that we're round about eight o'clock time okay so our immediate reaction would be or oh, let's fiddle with the mirror but hang on a sec we've already been right to the under, other end of the system and we've looked through the head and we can see the laser if we fiddle with any of the mirrors we shall upset that alignment. So that means the only thing that we can really play with is the laser tube itself. Because although we can see the end of the laser tube, we don't know what the alignment of the beam is, is what I'm saying. Whereas your first reaction might be to fiddle with this mirror number one, where we're at at the moment, I'm actually going to fiddle with the position of the laser tube, the horizontal position of the laser tube. So we need the back out and the front in. test it now. Yeah we've gone too far now so there we go we can bring it back to centre about there and now we've got to really lift it up a little bit I think well look that's not half bad that's on centre Now we'll bring the machine towards right the back of its stroke. So we now do a quick burn test on that, quick pulse test. And it is slightly out of position. Now we're at the back of the stroke. This is when it's more important that we set the laser up to the middle of its position. We've got it nearly there, so I've got to drag the laser back very slightly. And a bit more. And a little bit more. And I've got to take it up just another, maybe half a notch at the front. And that looks pretty good. Now we'll put the mirror scorch mark on there. And we'll bring it to the front of the stroke. And we'll do another pulse at the front there. S slightly out of position. Only very slightly. About a diameter. So now because the beam is a long way away from us at the front position there we only have to make the merest touch on this mirror at the back so it won't have any major effect on the settings that we've had remember this is the first time that we're actually touching the mirror so we can now just tweak the mirror very slightly and there we go look we're nearly perfect. That is on centre. Could just tweak that just a shade downwards. Just a shade more across. Okay. 
and I think we've now got two dots that coincide. They're not perfectly on centre, but they coincide. Now comes the time when we start using our little targets. We've got it close enough. So we'll just do a quick little burn on there. There we go. And then we'll bring it to the back of the stroke. And we'll do another quick burn. And I would think that it's probably within two millimetres, but the one at the front is not lined up with the one at the back. So we'll push it forward. That's the one at the front that's important now, because we only have to make the merest tweak on the mirror. That's the important thing. We don't want to touch the mirror very much at all. So we've got to get that one to come down a bit and across a bit. So we can see where that is, that's just marginally off centre. If we bring it to the back, we do another quick check here. I think those two dots coincide. So remember we've done very very little adjustment with the mirror. Most of the adjustment we've done so far has been with the laser tube. And we're now going to do the same thing with the laser tube. We're going to adjust it slightly if we can. Now to get the beam to go over to the left I think I need to bring the tube back a bit. I've got to move the tube parallel now that I've got the beams running the same both front and back. I don't think it's that far off centre and I'd say looking at those two results they're within two millimetres of centre. They're not absolutely spot on but they're pretty damn close. Now you'll remember we had line of sight through mirror number two onto mirror number three. Let's see whether or not we've got any result here. Just there. It's not far out. Well you've seen where the beam is at the extremity. Let's check where it is before we make any adjustments. Let's check where it is at the closest point. Let's see what we get when we do a pulse there now. Wow, that's not too bad. They're only very slightly adrift. The important thing here is it's virtually spot on the horizontal center line. We can now push that away. So we're making just the smallest adjustment to one feature at the moment, which is the height. And to get the beam to come up, I'm going to yeah, back it off slightly. I think I've done it. I'm going higher now. Back down. Back down. You know, as I've got this power set, I have to pulse it several times to find a mark, which is great. Because I don't actually burn any deep marks in there. Now we'll bring it to the back again. And we'll do a pulse test. Let's pulse it. Well, I think they're pretty well spot on. The laser beam is running absolutely parallel in both the horizontal and the vertical axis with this y-axis. Well, that was nice and quick and simple, wasn't it? But it isn't in the correct position. And that's where my magic adjustment comes in now. That's why I wanted this head to be adjustable up and down and backwards and forwards. Because once we get to this stage, I want to be able to adjust that dot into the center of that hole not by fiddling with the mirror but by moving the head. But it needs to be square. Just put a little bit of tension on the screws for a minute. And then we'll see what we've got. Oh look at that. Am I brilliant? I'm modest, I know that. So it's square. It's central, and a bit like me, perfect. Now, just in case, we'll take it to the other end of the stroke, and we do one more. There we go, look at that, perfection. Now that wasn't difficult, was it? Now that we've got all the things on this machine that I need, all the adjustment that I need, and a logical process, there's no more fighting <laughs> and this large this last stage down here should be fairly easy 
because we know that we've got the beam going onto the center of the mirror. All we've got to do is steer it now so that it goes right down the center of the tube. We can do that anywhere. While I'm here, I'm going to take the lens out and clean it because there's something very important that you should know. Ta da! Cotton gloves. Everything in life is a risk. But I didn't realize that this lens was probably more dangerous than the machine. Hence, I'm wearing cotton gloves. Not because I don't want to damage the lens, because I don't want to damage myself. This material is highly toxic, so it would appear, and I'll give you a reference to a website for the safety data sheet on this, which basically says things to the effect that, you know, yeah, I know you can't and shouldn't swallow it, um, but it's very, very toxic as a material. So handling it even like this is not necessarily good for you because it can actually pass into your skin. Now I don't think, to be honest, this lens is quite as dangerous as it seems because it's a coated lens, which means the, the zinc selenide is actually protected by a coating. But I'm not going to take the risk anymore. Whenever I handle these lenses, I'm going to be wearing cotton gloves. That's how seriously I take what I read on that data sheet. I put that lens in upside down, haven't I? You didn't tell me that. You were going to let me make a silly mistake, weren't you? Safety lecture over. Back to real hands now, things that I can touch and feel with. We know that we've got a beam coming down the centre there. So I'm going to do two things. I'm just going to blow the smoke away and do a pulse. Oh, there's our beam. I'm now going to drop it down by two inches. Wow. They're more or less one and the same. In this direction, it looks fairly central to this um, column. But from the front here, it's definitely about three millimeters to the right of center line. So what I'm going to do is to tweak just this top mirror here. And I'm going to twist it that way so I'm going to push, let the mirror come out so that the beam steers that way. That looks better. That looks more, much more on centre line now. So what I'm now going to do is to put the lens on. Because we normally work at about 6mm distance. So let's do a pulse at 6mm. Very nice small pulse. And now we'll drop it down. We don't normally work more than 10 or 12 or 15 millimeters away. So let's check another pulse. So the beam is already starting to diverge there, but it hasn't gone very far away from the original beam. I think you can see for both of those, look, the, the first pierce and the second pierce are only very slightly off centre to each other. So I'm very happy with that setup now. I don't feel the least bit intimidated by ripping my mirrors off, ripping my laser tube off and having to reset it now. Um, I still hate having to do the pulse test, but now that I've got it set up from scratch, I can set my red beam up so that any small changes and checks that I want to make on the machine will just be easy. Anyway, I hope that this has taken a lot of the mystery out of setting up your machine. The key feature to me was being able, when I realized that this was one of the key things that you have to fiddle with. Fiddling with the mirrors is not gonna get you anywhere. You can only make very small changes with the mirrors. And I hope we've demonstrated that today. We've hardly touched the mirrors, 